Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Cloud Architects Podcast. Today, we have a very special recording because it is that time of the year where we all make special recordings about things that rhyme with security. But what we'll unpack on this show, joined by my co-host, who's um, very uh, newly moved and in a new place that we know nothing of yet, Chris, is that we'll talk about how relevant this topic actually should be every month. But Chris, welcome. Hello. How are you doing? Uh, it's always good to see you, man. Always good to see you. Always good to be here. Uh, yes, I think for someone, it, those who actually follow the background of where I'm at, this, I don't know, this must be like the 10th location for me to record an episode at this point. So, you know, doing well with, you know, different locations and different backgrounds, but so happy to be here. Really, really glad to be here. Um, and really, really excited to be talking to our guest as well. This is going to be a really fun episode, I think. Tell us about our guest, Chris, because you and uh, our guest have got a little bit of work history that you share. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So very, very excited to uh, to be joined by, by Shannon Garcia. I'm going to have Shannon introduce herself because she does some absolutely amazing things. But, you know, just uh, such, a, such a great, knowledgeable um, person, really good at what she does um, and really, really fun to talk to too. So... Um, Shannon, can you, well, firstly, welcome to the show. Thank you for joining us and thank you for making time to to spend your morning with us. Um, but for those who don't know you, do you mind just doing a, a quick introduction of who you are and what you do? Yes, absolutely. Number one, thank you, gentlemen, for having me um, be a guest on the show. Excited to be here with you. And um, my background, really, for those of you um, that don't know me, probably a number of you, uh, I didn't start out in cybersecurity, so that's first and foremost. I did start out as an engineer um, for uh, my first part of my career and then got into cybersecurity. So I've been working in consulting for the past 10 years over um, with a number of different firms. So we can dive into some of that if you'd like. And a lot of my background really comes in the AppSec space and started out in pen testing and then really kind of evolved uh, from that point, working with our clients to help really design and build security in. And we are seeing a lot of things that I know we'll dive into more. So I'm excited. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And as Nick alluded, it is Cybersecurity Awareness, Awareness Month, I guess. And, and it's one of, the, one of the things when we were thinking about doing a, a sort of an episode to touch cybersecurity awareness, uh, I just, you know, I just, I just knew that uh, you would be the, the perfect guest for us. So this is this is going to be really, really exciting. And it's one of those things that, you know, I think we take one month every year to, to sort of think about and, and and try and shine a light on cybersecurity awareness. But really every month, as, as Nick said earlier, uh, should be cybersecurity awareness month. I think we, we have so much more work to do in this, in this space, right? I think, um, you, know, you know, just when, when I think, you know, we're making some progress here, <laughs> you know, you come across an incident or you hear a story or something happens that kind of brings you very quickly back to it and you go, really? Tell us a story, Chris. Go on, tell us what happened. <laughs> oh, no, I just, I, you know, I was actually, just today, just today, I was I was um, uh, helping a family member who, um, who got uh, successfully fished and it was, you know, it was one of those things where, you know, literally I present at conferences on this topic and yet you know someone in my in my own family kind of fell victim to it right and 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 uh uh you kind of look at it and you go wow that that's that's all it took right but you know the reality is is that i think um we take so much for granted when we work in the industry we we take sort of knowledge and awareness and and understanding of these things for granted and unfortunately there's a large majority of, of folks and you know who, who are not as familiar with this stuff, right? And and who are just sort of, I guess, ripe for the picking, if, if you will. No, I absolutely you say agree. that, Chris, but let me let me just wrap this into a very first question for Shannon. Yeah. So one of the things that we, we see a lot is that security is this black box that we just flick on and it's a switch and it works, right? So, you know, I bought security from a vendor and um, I'm okay on time. That. Well, but funny you should say that. It's like zero trust, right? Could I have zero trust, please? <laughs> oh, yes. gosh. Those lovely words that mean many things to different people, especially in the industry. Um, that 
We see that often. I think we all see that and diving into, and we actually had some conversations with a client actually with respect to some of the details behind what services we sell and what is that and how we impact that. I don't think we do enough of that. And even our clients that we work with don't truly understand what that means. Um, I'll give you an example. Um, As we're talking about this, I remember being in an executive briefing center and I had a client uh, as we were on the topic of, of red team engagements as an example, and they asked about it. And part of that conversation was, well, because they were a financial client that they ship out laptops to the testers. And I asked, I said, this is where details matter, right? Because in another firm, a red team engagement meant we went in completely knowing nothing, trying to understand yeah. what's going on, right, with the organization. They're not issuing laptops. And that was my question. I'm just like, do you issue laptops <laughs> to your attackers as an example? So again, this is where those details matter in terms of how those things are executed. Who are you looking at that from that lens and in terms of an attacker? Is it somebody completely external? Is it, you know, an employee? Um, how are you defining that? And what are the things that you're looking for truly? And again, I don't think we have enough of that and we haven't done a great job of, I would say, even educating our clients in terms of those nuances of what we're trying to do, the goals and objectives of what we're trying to achieve. So yeah, there's definitely a lot of work. Um, without a doubt. And I would say the other thing that kind of comes top of mind, just because of where we are, as we look out um, with everything going on with companies, right? A lot of technology companies are letting people go. They're, you know, we're in a, obviously an economic uh, crisis and condition globally, but it's um, saddening to see the impact on our industry right now. And I have a number of sellers that are telling me, Shannon, we have CISOs that are leaving companies kind of left and right right now, whether they're going on their own or they're being let go. And I think we all know, and Chris, you kind of alluded to this, like, you know, every time we think we're making progress somewhere, now we're in this, you know, position where we have people being let go and security isn't um, isn't even going to have the priority it did. And we weren't even doing great at it at that point. So I think we're really kind of, you know, um, interesting time, I should say, as it pertains to cybersecurity. And what does that mean for companies? There's definitely going to be a lot more opportunity, I believe, because again, companies are cutting costs. They don't, you know, necessarily see it as a, um, as a priority, again, depending on uh, the type of company that you are and what you've been through, I would say in your past kind of dictates that. Um, If you've gone through it, you know, the importance of it from going through a breach and living through that and the impact that it's had. Um, but if you haven't, not at least not to you know the extent where it's something um, you know super impactful to your organization or business, then it's a different story, right? So anyway, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I have uh, one other question. Sorry, Chris, we've yeah. been talking over each no. other. Yeah, I was going to say I think I, it's unfortunate that a lot of organizations only give security and security awareness thought or much thought or any thought or any budget once they've had to deal with a breach or some sort of compromise situation right Mm -hmm. that's it it's so unfortunate because that's really the only you know and i actually had someone ask me this question before um i i I presented at a a conference here in in sydney uh, about a month ago and we were talking about fishing and you know stuff like that and midway through the 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 session someone put put their hand up and i thought oh here we go like <laughs> what did i say to <laughs> to offend you so and, and and the question the question was just really like um you know i wish i had seen your i wish i had seen this talk sooner because we've literally just dealt with a breach that you know had we one prioritized a few things differently and two had a little bit more insight into some of these uh, you know attack att- uh, uh, techniques and and tactics maybe we would have done a little bit of a better job, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, it's so unfortunate because what do you say to someone like that? Like, mm, ah, like, you know, conference should have been two months sooner or, or whatever. It's just, it's it's really sad with that. And, and, and of course, what this person said was, well, now everyone knows about security. And of course, we've got full sponsorship from from our executive team. Whereas before we were, we were trying to put plans in place, we were trying to prepare uh, and we were struggling to get that support. Um, so it's really unfortunate. But, you know, someone else in the audience made a good point uh, at that time that 
there is laws like globally the laws are changing now right as, as far as responsibility goes and so organizations and executives in this sea level are starting to be held responsible and accountable for this stuff so hopefully that also um will, will, will provide some opportunities right for for change and for um you know buy-in to to actually start making some making some positive impact there so sorry nick i yeah. didn't need to cut you off no no not at all i um saw a a video that you made shannon about penetration testing and uh un, unshamed unashamed plug for your youtube channel we'll put that in the the show notes it's well, thank you. it's something that i thought was very refreshing and um dare I even say and 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 a very adult take in terms of what is a penetration test actually worth and why do we even pen test is it for the sake of uh satisfying a, a business requirement or a compliance requirement or an actual security requirement where we're pen testing for a particular risk scenario that we're trying to mitigate. Mm-hmm. And I I fear that in the industry we say, well, I've done a penetration test, so I'm fine. But then I get breached two weeks later or um, within the year and it's like, but we had these pen tests. Why is this stuff still happening? Do you mind just giving us your perspective on that? Oh, absolutely. Um, Given that that's kind of where I started in the industry and working in that arena, it took time for me to recognize and see what was happening with clients as our pen testing programs. And again, I'm speaking um, more so on on an AppSec related basis because of the number of applications that organizations have. It, we did other things, obviously, from a network infrastructure as well. But what I began to see and notice, especially with larger enterprise organizations, is that they would begin improving and investing in those programs. As an example, a lot of that could be dictated because of compliance regulations, if there's PCI, you know, all those um, things obviously come into play. But what was, again, I think my aha moment, even in, even when doing um, red team engagements, right, when we really went in and did these covert, um, you know, assessments over weeks and weeks and weeks, nobody knowing, you know, trying to figure out how we, you know, get in, move laterally, uh, persist. And it was just interesting to kind of see the amount of um, investment that kind of went into all of these things. But when you kind of took a step back and we were maybe a year in these programs, they're just like, you know, we're, for lack of a better word, we're, we're playing whack-a-mole with the things that we find, right? We go in and kind of, you know, bang on things or we fix them. And it's this very reactive nature. And the conversation began to really kind of change. And it was, you know, Shannon, how can you help me? How can we get better at this? Because the root cause of the problem, right, in terms of how things were being designed, how they were being developed, wasn't being taken into account. It's just like, let's go fix and go to the next thing. And that was just this constant like loop and cycle. And that really, for me, changed the trajectory, I would say, for my um, for my role and what I was trying to do. And I did have the opportunity to begin, you know, building services to help our clients figure this out and just like, hey, you need to look at this point in time assessment. Let's go fix and then go to the next. And it was just kind of very pervasive. So that shift began to happen. And again, we see it all over the place in terms of you know, compliance needs or, you know, I was told to go do this or whatever. We on the rare occasion, I I don't want to say rare. I mean, it's more than rare, but we do have companies or organizations that yes, they have to meet that, but they really do care about, you know, being secure. And what does that mean? Not only for their clients, but also their employees. Um, And so it's really nice and refreshing to see that. Um, But it is a, it is a huge problem. And I think they're, I see it often enough where, and again, we pen testing is just one element or facet of that. Um, I had another uh, episode that talks about, you know, companies just wasting money because they'll do the thing to to check the box, right? Yeah. But they don't necessarily go fix everything or in a timely fashion. And that's, I think for me, that was one of the hardest things is going in, doing uh, work, showing them how a full compromise was able to happen and then just months later seeing them truly you know in the public's eye because of them just like this is the exact way we we you know we laid this out and so that was just really hard so it's just like you know it 
it had me thinking like, how do we do better? How do we help our companies, our clients do better um, more quickly? And I guess this kind of ties back to um, one of the co- you know conversations we were having earlier in terms of it's unfortunate that they have to go through this, like you know hearing it before. Yeah. But sometimes I stop and think maybe we have to just like in other things in life, like we have to go through those hard things. Or like if you have kids, <laughs> they have yes. to go through that to to learn that pain, to learn the lesson. Yes. Because otherwise, yes. you know, somebody tells you you need to do X, Y, Z, they're not going to necessarily do it. You live through the pain of what that means, and then you That's you know right. you change. So it's unfortunate, but again, the the more I guess it happens, the more we learn and then can apply, you know, some of that in terms of what we do in our processes or take it to another company or whatever. Um, but yeah, I think that's just part of the the human nature um, to some degree that we have to go through some of those, you know, painful lessons in life, unfortunately. So yeah. 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 So you mentioned something very interesting there, which was let's design for security. So let's just assume that you've got a customer and they've bought in and they say, Shannon, I've got years worth of legacy. I've got stuff. Things I can't change and the ship moves slowly. Most of our enterprise customers are in the position where they've got some kind of legacy that's exceptionally hard to deal with for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. And now you throw the design word at them and they say, but I have what I have. Where do you start this journey with? Yeah. So great question. And it really depends on what those legacy systems are. And part of, I think, any conversation or or partnership, like true partnership, not just a transactional thing with a client, is really understanding their business. And this goes, even if you're working inside the business as a CISO or, or any type of security leader, is really understanding how they operate and we can maybe get onto this later, but I think this is part of the the gap that we have with security in, in the business side is that there is a lack of understanding in terms of business. And so it just kind of seems like this discrete thing and we're, I believe we're failing at that. But nonetheless, it's really understanding going back to um, the situation that you mentioned, what are those legacy systems that they have exploring what those options are in order to potentially design something new if that's going to continue on and and be part of that business is it something revenue generating um, as an example and and looking at all these things on a case-by-case basis and then making those determinations like we're going to make the choice not to um, move to something newer more modern as an example but what are all of the things from a control perspective that we absolutely can do in order to protect it the best we can Right. And Mm -hmm. these are those decisions that I think we don't do a great job of really kind of sitting back where we can get very prescriptive because we're good technically in terms of explaining a vulnerability or why, you know, something can happen. But again, it's it's a contextual aspect of the Mm -hmm. business. Where does it truly make sense? Because there's a lot of things, right, that um, a business looks at from a cost perspective and risk, but it's just really kind of laying it out in my opinion. And so it really is, you know, trying to figure those things out along with that client to help them make an educated decision because it is their decision after all. Right. So those are the things that we look at um, and just opportunities to explore, at least kind of weighing those options, if you will, um, mm-hmm. that we work with, uh, with them. So, yeah. Legacy you find so hard. Right. Cause, it is. Cause it's, it never, is. it's never, it's never sexy to spend money on the old stuff. Right. Correct. Is one of, they want the new shiny thing. They want the co-pilot and the AI. That's what they want. That's where they want to spend the money. They don't want to be spending money on old. It's working. Well, right. why do we? Yeah. Why do we need to mess with this? It's, right. it's working well enough. Why? Why touch it? Yeah. 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 I have yeah. this exact conversation. Um, I think yesterday with a, a customer of mine, and he echoed something that we we wrote about extensively when when we we're trying to figure out well how do we talk to business leaders about security and his approach was well we talk to them about risk because what do we do when we talk to mm-hmm. business leaders we have to talk about the risk as opposed to you know but tls is moving up a major version right like what what does that mean and, and they don't care and they shouldn't mm-hmm. care, right? But you could say, and what's worked really well for one of my other customers who um, found this old system lying around and it was, uh, was going to be millions to change the system. And he 
found an executive and said, we have this thing, black box thing, right? And it's going to millions to, to change this thing. And the executive said, okay, why do I care? And then the CISO went, well, here's the risk. Now, and the risk was several hundred million of exposure. Mm -hmm. It was like, uh, that's a, that's a really easy decision. I'm signing off on this today. Right. And when the, the language changed, um, technical stuff that the business doesn't care about to, um, we have a system, there's a risk. This is the effect of the risk sign on the dotted line that you accept this risk. Then all of a sudden the business became very involved and wanted to mitigate a risk that they understood the exposure. Right. I think you hit the nail on the head. We don't do well at speaking their language and putting it in quantifying it in a manner that um, translates for them. Right. Yeah. So again, it goes back to how do we speak to them in, in business terms and just some individuals that I've been speaking with recently from a business perspective. Um, acquiring businesses or even working with just like um, small and medium businesses, you know, the conversation with Shannon, you know, they don't look at it the same way we do. They're looking at it. Well, what does it cost? Like if, if yes. there's a problem, if it's a merger and acquisition, right? Yeah. Um, what is the cost associated with it? It's not just like this fixated pointed thing. They're looking at it in the entirety. And the other thing with respect to risk, I do recall having a client um, at a former company and I had to basically help them come up with a way from a risk perspective based on things that we found with their um, with their program. It was for their AppSec program. And they said, Shannon, we need to list this out in terms of risk and what does that mean to the business? And it was going to their chief risk officer um, in terms of you know him taking that then to the board. And I was just like, okay. I was like, well, this is interesting. I was just like, but I completely get it. I was like, this makes sense to me. But again, yeah. how do you quantify that, whether, you know, it's um, from an, a financial perspective or the number of clients or the information or the data or whatever, it's finding those ways to quantify as meaningfully as you possibly can. And I think this is where we do need help in that relationship with different parts of the business to be able to do that, to translate because they don't understand, hey, you know, we have this specific, you know, vulnerability or there's, we have configuration issues or the legacy systems. And what does that mean? Um, and again, when you put it in that manner, they're just like, oh, I get it now. Right. So I think that's a lot of where we have to go from a, um, from an industry perspective and being able to bridge that gap from business to the technical side from cybersecurity. Wonderful. Yeah. You, you have to wonder if, so, you know, look, I guess, I guess recently with, with everything that happened with the MGM resorts, right. And, and the casino in, in, in Vegas and, you have to wonder if someone had rephrased that right to an executive at, at some time back and, and mm. said to them in the words of, you know, do you realize that if this happens, we will be losing whatever it is, eight, 10, $12 million a day being down, right? Yeah. Perhaps that conversation would have gone very, very differently and the outcome yes. would have been very, very differently. But I think yeah. also as, as, as horrible as it is for these organizations to go through that type of thing it does it helps us because it gives us a tool when we're talking to to business right like you said i i don't feel like i will always do the best job of of, of talking that business language of, of of risk and and you know mitigation and and all of that type of stuff but i think it gives us a tool to be able to say well put yourself in the shoes of mgm and think about what would have happened if that was your, if that was you, and and you know your your business, and you had a breach, and that the resulting downtime meant X, right? Every every company has a, I guess a, a cost associated to something, whether it is a you know a, a casino floor or you know a popcorn machine or a you know <laughs> a secret herbs and spices recipe that that is hidden somewhere, right? There's there's a yeah. cost associated to losing that stuff or not being able to access it, so. Um, I think if we look around, there are some very valuable lessons that we can kind of learn from, right? Uh, and, and we have these conversations as well. Uh, yeah. Very practical. Abs absolutely. And then the other thing, Chris, as you were talking about that, that came to mind 
even outside of the business, and this has been coming up um, recently as well, is how do we take and bridge another gap, um, somewhat similar, but yet a gap in terms of language and how we communicate is um, on the legal side. And mm-hmm. one of one of the girls that um, I had the opportunity to mentor went back to school and she's getting her master's degree and she's studying a lot of things from a um, policy compliance perspective. And she said, Shannon, you know, I wrote this paper and she sent it over for me to review. And it was just really interesting. Was it about it was about LinkedIn and scraping and the data that was getting because obviously it's free data. Right. And so I was just mm-hmm. like, this is really interesting. And you can kind of see where we have gaps um, as it pertains to that when we go when things go to court. Like, what does that mean? And so um, even through uh, some of our CISO dinners that we've had, just kind of listening to some of the CISOs and things that are going to, uh, you know, to higher level courts, you know, what does that mean? And judges and, you know, attorneys not really understanding the mechanics from a technical perspective. And I'm just like, wow, we're making decisions based on this, right? From a, wow. um, a law perspective, right? Things that are coming into play. But I'm just like, there's still that gap. I'm just like, how do we Again, how do we take that language and, and use, um, use you know, words or um, things that they are familiar with to then translate, you know, what that means? And right now, I'm just like, how, you know, we get into these conversations, like, how do we do better um, in yeah. terms of that? Because that's going to forge the path, right, for anything that goes, um, you know, at any cases that go forward. So it was really kind of interesting. I think we have a number of things that we have to kind of figure out how do we how do we improve? Um, you know, uh-huh. down the road as we continue, which will be interesting, without a doubt. I think it is definitely a scary, scary to consider that you know, for me, many of, I mean, certainly you know, in the United States or Australia, in many countries, the legislation is being made by people who don't necessarily understand the, the technical ins and outs, right? Yeah. So that that that's kind of scary because they're they're yes. you know, in many cases, they're mandating things that you know are either you know just completely you know not relevant or, or not practical um uh, yeah it's it's a very scary thought but then you know like you said it bridging the gap of being able to sort of um as a technical person understand even all that legal stuff because you know for me right. um, it, it's it, it's an area that i i don't enjoy very much right i didn't i didn't particularly want to be, be reading through you know all these things uh all the time and it, 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 yeah so i think i think yeah, from both sides, I think that's that's very good. That's very good, uh, very good information. I think. Yeah, absolutely. Nobody enjoys the law until they they get smacked by the law, and then they figure out what their rights are. Right. Absolutely, right. absolutely. Or you live in ignorance and you suffer. Mm-hmm. And it's it's the same from a, um, a cybersecurity awareness point of view. You don't care about stuff until mm-hmm. it happens to you, and and we we've made this point. I think ad nauseum so far, and if we had to think about Chris's unfortunate family member who got fished, and let alone um, people who care about their core business, if that's selling billions of loaves of bread or airline tickets or pulling um, commodities out of the ground like gold or platinum or whatever, and Business people are business people, and they just care about what they care about, what they think is core to them. And now we tell them, you need to know um, about fishing and vishing and all these words that come at them. And Shannon, where would a normal human being even start when they say, all right, I run a business. I'm an executive that does stuff that has to do with my executive function. And now I need to start caring about the security thing. Okay, I'm bought in, but where do I even start? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, Goodness gracious, I don't know if I have an easy answer for that either. I would say... It's true, it's not an easy answer. It isn't, it isn't. It's how do you educate somebody that doesn't know that world, but whether they realize it or not, it's a component right? Yeah. Uh-huh. And you mentioned the ignorance. I, I think we all pay an ignorance tax for something, yes. <laughs> right? At the end of the day, uh, depending on what that is. So 
if you're starting a company, maybe I'm looking at it from the lens of a company that's there or an executive that comes in. Um, obviously, there's going to be IT, but maybe we look at both sides because I think people get into business every day and they don't think about the things that they're doing and how they're transacting yeah. online or the companies that they're using. Right. So, and again, they're a small one man, you know, one woman show or whatever, it's at least to start yeah. um, or maybe three. But nonetheless, these are all things that you have to take into yeah. consideration. So it's maybe that's something that we need to do. And again, I'm looking at that particular scenario as far as educating some people that are getting into business, because obviously they're just focusing on their products. Right. Every company is focusing focusing on ultimately their product and service and what they bring to market. But there's these ancillary things that they have to take into consideration, obviously, um, just like, you know, from a financial perspective, SOX compliance, whatever. Uh, same thing is true here. I think it's really understanding the fundamentals. And I think, you know, we're talking core things, cybersecurity. There's there's some base level things that we need to start with. And I think this is another thing that we see is it's obviously from a technical perspective, we have, you know, engineers, people in cyber they dive into the details because we're we're there to fix, right? We're there yeah. to problem solve. But we may do that because it's this reactive nature, but we don't necessarily have a good, I guess, foundation of of guidance, right? So taking, you know, whatever cybersecurity framework we have, even as a base level, we have these conversations regularly with established companies and they're just like, oh well, you know, we don't really have a cybersecurity framework because that's part of our question when we're talking with them is just, you know, what are you using so we can help you adhere to that and not even having that, right? Because that should be these foundational things. Does that alone fix the problem? Yeah. No, but at least it gives you that guidance to know where you're going, right? Just like if you're, you know, going on a trip or where are you going? I don't know. Like, how do you know if you're yes. there, right? Yes. So I think it's those base level fundamental things that we need to, you know, help our clients with or, or companies um, to kind of at least give them that awareness of what they need to have in place and then begin kind of moving in that direction um, to, um, you know, make make positive change for the right. It's hard when you don't know what you don't know, right? You, some, it is. You know, I, I can see, you know, small business owners not even knowing or understanding the concept of a cybersecurity policy, right? Like, what's that? I don't I don't care. I'm I'm a plumber. I don't, you know, I have exactly. An app. I, I invoice people when I, when I fix their toilet, I don't really care. Um, yeah. And I guess similarly, like, you know, when I set up my, my company, because I'm a one man guy, one man band, right? Like mm -hmm. yeah. I had to figure out what all this insurance stuff, man. I'm like, yeah. What do, you, yes. what, what do I need insurance for? Right. <laughs> I'm no. fixing some dude's IT systems. Why do I need insurance? Well, yes. Know, turns out there are many reasons why I need insurance right. for that. Um, and, 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 you know, you don't, you don't know what you're getting into when you, when you, when mm. you do this, right. There's so many sort of elements and, um, and I guess that's where it is helpful to find a, a partner, right. And have a relationship with, with an organization or a vendor where, where you can, if they help, if they understand your business, um, potentially you can focus on the business and they can help you focus on the things that you know, as a, as a partner, they're good at, right? Cybersecurity, yeah. keep you, you safe and secure. I think, uh, I, unfortunately it's a, it's a difficult thing too, because finding the right partner is also not easy. You know, there are, um, uh, folks peddling snake oil everywhere. Right. And it's absolutely, it's it is, you know, it is. Yeah. I was going to say, no, I, you yeah. hit a, hit a chord for me. <laughs> Um, and yeah. the reason I, I'm just like, oh, goodness, um, is because we do we do see that with clients and they don't know any better. Right. Mm -hmm. Because if you're not a subject matter expert, you don't know. Or even if you're hiring somebody on your staff, as an example, because you need your, you know, first and I, I'm using pen tester, but you, mm -hmm. you need your first pen tester. And it's interesting because as we were going through, as an example, the hype of the market cycle, right, in 20, yeah. you know, 22 and everybody was you know, trying to hire and it was just crazy. And, you know, everybody was jumping and these crazy packages were happening um, from a comp perspective before the bottom started to fall, you know, uh, fall out. But I had people that were interviewing for positions and they were um, not very skilled. They're very, I guess, low level skilled. And they ended up getting these really um, high level packages and uh, titles. And I'm just like, wow. Um, but again, they're going to jump to an opportunity for them that, you know, gives them a higher title, higher salary, but they didn't necessarily have the true skills to warrant that. And the companies that were hiring them didn't know better. 
So it's just mm-hmm. like, oh, it's like that's hard to to see your end. Same thing when, you know, going to to get a vendor, right? The same thing is true. It's just like, how do you know it's real? You know, are they that good? Do they really know their stuff? And really trying to, you know, dive into that um, and their skill set and capabilities. And are we really going to get the results or is it just snake oil and, you know, smoke and mirrors um, from that mm-hmm. perspective? And again, you know, sometimes you find out the hard way. Um, but that's really hard uh, for me to see. One of my recommendations with clients that I work with is always at least have, you know, somebody on staff that truly knows because then they can call BS when they see it, right? With working with those organizations, but you know, at least have to have, you know, that one that you know and can trust and, you know, knows the language, knows what's going on when they're talking yeah. about that and what that means. Because otherwise you're you're learning the hard way, I should say, and you can have some painful lessons um, as a result of that. And that's tough. So, hey. Hey. I feel like this uh, this episode has flown past far too quickly. This is definitely one of the the most interesting, um, and security is always interesting, but um, uh, from a, a, a practicality and a pain point of view, it's definitely been an, an interesting episode. But before we let you go, we need to ask you, what is it that you would like to plug? What is it that you'd like to make folks aware of? Obviously, your YouTube channel and... Um, like I said, we will stick that in the show notes. But what else is there that that you'd like to to let people know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I would say the other thing, obviously, other than my YouTube channel, I am currently working on my first uh, course, which I'm really excited about. And that is um, specific to consultants that are looking to mm-hmm. make the leap to manage a team for the first time. And obviously you know, being in this industry and building and leading teams for the last decade, um, it's kind of near and dear to my heart. And seeing uh, those that are making that leap going from a a technical role to, again, leading others, but also the business side of that and creating that. Um, So I'm working on that, hoping to release by the end of this year, early next year. So anybody interested, uh, hit me up. But yes, I'll be working on that as well. And and more content for my for my YouTube channel. Where would they find the course, Shannon? And how do people get a hold of you? Yes. Uh, so the best ways to probably get a hold of me is probably through LinkedIn. Um, but you can find my YouTube channel at CyberSec Roundtable. So nice. You. And your your course, where where will it be published? I haven't decided what platform yet, so I will let you know. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'll keep you so, updated. Uh, please. And so I will yeah. uh, encourage a, a follow at least on on LinkedIn, and then uh, we'll stay up to date. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. It's been a great topic. Great guest, Chris. I think um, this is definitely the, the 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 right guest and the right topic for uh, um, the uh, Cybersecurity Awareness Month that should happen every month. <laughs> every month, mm-hmm. Cybersecurity Awareness Month. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. <laughs> <laughs> Double E in October. But uh, no, Shannon, right. thank you for making making time to to uh, to talk to us. Really appreciate you coming on, and uh, what a fun and informative chat. Yes, thank you for having me. Thank you, gentlemen.